In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Carmelite Daily Reflections on the Mass Readings from the Carmelites of Karnataka, Goa Province in India. Today is Saturday, 22nd of August 2020. We are in the 20th week of Ordinary Time and today we celebrate the Feast of the Queenship of Mary. Let us now listen to the Word of God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply disturbed by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid, you have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people call barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary, let what you have said be done to me, and the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Of all titles by which we honour the Virgin Mary, few are older than that of the Queen, for the scriptures clearly declare that she is the mother of a king. We have already heard in the reading today, the Lord will give him the throne of David his father, and he shall be king over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Luke chapter 1 verses 32 From the early centuries of Christianity, therefore the faithful have addressed prayers and hymns of praise and veneration to the Queen of Heaven, the Virgin Mother of Christ the King. References to the queenly dignity of Mary are found both in the ancient documents of the Church and ancient books of sacred liturgy. Thus, from the beginning of the Christian era, the faithful have believed that Mary received privileges and graces above all other members of the human race. And given the intimate connection between mother and son, they readily acknowledge the royal dignity of the Mother of God. Since Kingdom of Christ is not of this world, the Queenship of Mary is also not of a temporal nature. Her royalty is spiritual and supernatural. In October of the Marian year of 1954, Pope Pius XII issued an encyclical Aceli Reginam, proclaiming the Queenship of Mary and decreeing that the Feast of Our Lady's Queenship be celebrated throughout the whole world on May the 31st. It has since been moved to August the 22nd. On May 13th of the following year, in a radio message to Fatima, the Pope explained why Mary is entitled to be called Queen. In that address, he said, Jesus is King throughout all eternity by nature and by right of conquest. Through Him, with Him and subordinate to Him, Mary is Queen by grace, by divine relationship, by right of conquest and by singular election. Queen by grace. Even before the incarnation of the Divine Son in the womb of Mary, the angel Gabriel saluted her as full of grace. St. Thomas Aquinas does not hesitate to say that the Blessed Virgin Mary has a certain infinite dignity from the infinite goodness that is God. For this reason, Pope Pius XII states in his encyclical, it cannot be doubted that Mary Most Holy is far above all other creatures in dignity and after her son possesses primacy over all. 
queen of divine relationships. God the Father of whom Mary is the first adoptive daughter and the highest in grace selected Mary to be the mother of his son whom he sent into the world to redeem mankind. God the Son likewise chose Mary as his mother and by the foreseen merits of his passion and death endowed her with spiritual gifts and a fullness of grace beyond our power to comprehend. God the Holy Spirit chose her as his virginal spouse, infused into her soul the gifts of grace merited by the Son. Romans chapter 5 verses 5 and miraculously brought about the conception of the divine word in her womb. The unique relationship with all three divine persons of the Blessed Trinity establishes Mary at a level of dignity which is appropriately expressed by the title Queen. These relationships were established with a view of Christ's incarnation and birth as the Son of Mary. Now even as then, Christ is the absolute ruler of the universe. Mary as his mother is related by a true blood relationship to the King of Kings. Queen by right of conquest. As the new Eve, Mary was the helper of Christ in every phase of his work of redemption because she was the associate of Jesus on Calvary in winning all graces of salvation. Now as Queen of Heaven, she is his associate in distributing those graces to mankind. She shares in his kingdom, says Saint Albert the Great, because she shared in his suffering for the human race. Mary had the special privilege of cooperating dependently on Christ in the acquiring of that redeeming grace. She stood by her son on Calvary, offered him to the Father as a sacrifice and merited through him, with him and subordinate to him the salvation of humankind. Queen by singular election Mary enjoyed all the supernatural gifts that Adam had before the fall and a fullness of grace beyond our ability to comprehend. She could not have a strict right to the dignities and power she now enjoys. They are hers because God, by a singular and special election, chose her to be the queen of angels and men. But Mary's queenship has roots in scripture. At the Annunciation, Gabriel announced that Mary's son would receive the throne of David and rule forever. At the Visitation, Elizabeth called Mary, Mother of my Lord. As in all the mysteries of Mary's life, Mary is closely associated with Jesus. Her queenship is a share in Jesus' kingship. We can also recall that in the Old Testament, the mother of the king had great influence in the court. The queen is always vigilant to intercede with the king whom she bore, said Pope Sixtus IV. Today's feast is a logical follow-up to the Assumption and is now celebrated on the octave day of that feast. God lavishes His graces upon us who believe in Him and shows His favour to the lowly, humble and those receptive to His word. Mary's question was, how shall this be? It was not prompted by doubt or scepticism but by an amazement. She is the true hearer of the word willing to do his will even if it seems difficult or costly. God gives us grace and he expects us to respond with the same willingness, obedience and heartfelt trust as Mary did. When God commands, he also gives us his assistance, strength and means to respond. All that we need is our goodwill to yield to his grace by giving a unqualified yes to his will and plan in our life. Let his will, his word, take flesh in our personal lives also. God is the source, but Mary is the instrument, and she is the instrument because God wanted it this way. She can do nothing by herself, but she doesn't have to do it all by herself. She is not the saviour, she is the instrument. 
Devotion to her is a way of simply acknowledging what is true. It's not just some honor we bestow upon Mary by thanking her for cooperating with God's plan. Rather, it's an acknowledgement of a continual role of mediation of grace in our world and in our lives. From heaven, God does not take this from her. Rather, she is made our mother and our queen. And a worthy mother and queen she is. I wish you all a happy feast of the Queenship of Mary. My dear brother and sister, today being Saturday, day dedicated to honor our Heavenly Mother, let's pray the Novena prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Novena prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Mother of God, we greet you as Queen and Mother of Carmel. You were raised from being a lowly handmaid to the great dignity of the Mother of the Word Incarnate. We dedicate ourselves as an act of filial homage. We glorify the Holy Trinity by honoring you, and in our many needs, we have recourse to your protection and your powerful intercession. Jesus, your Son, was so obedient to you on earth, will certainly grant your petitions on our behalf. With this trust and unbounded confidence, we beseech you to hear our prayers and obtain for us of your Divine Son the favors we request in this novena. Having experienced the efficacy of your prayers, we are full of confidence that you will gain for us this favor if it is for the glory of God and for our good. Amen. Let us pray for our petitions. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, and sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, Hear and answer me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray for us. Thanksgiving Prayer Holy Mother of God and Queen of Carmel, we, your children, come before you in a spirit of filial devotion and gratitude. As mother of our spiritual life, you have obtained for us innumerable graces and blessings 
from our heavenly father who has given to us through you the greatest of all treasures Christ our lord we recognize with deep sentiments of thankfulness all the spiritual favors that have come to us through your powerful intercession in particular we thank you for your special protection over those who wear your holy scapular with faith and love and finally we thank you for answering our prayers in our personal needs we implore from you the great grace of final perseverance that we remain faithful to the end to your son our lord jesus christ who is lord forever and ever amen let's pray for god's blessing May the Lord Jesus be with you to defend you. May he be with you to sustain you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he follow you to guard you. From above, may he bless you with the Father and the Holy Spirit who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you dear friends for joining us in this reflection on the word of God. And we would like to thank Father Regan de Souza for his reflection on the word of God today. We remember all those who are celebrating their birthday. We wish them happy birthday and pray for them. Especially Aldrich de Souza from Baina Vasco Goa. Chantal Fernandez from London, Cyril Castellino from Kuwait, Joseph De Souza from Kolalgiri, Udupi, Diana Fernandez from Bijay presently Berlin, Roni De Souza from Jogeshwari presently in Kuwait, Tina De Souza, Terence Peter from Sagar Shimoga, Myron Pereira from London, Riona Almeida from Dubai. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. Have a great weekend. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.